Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for standing by and welcome to the two Q4 2020 ServiceNow Earnings Conference Call. At this time, all participants are in a listen-only mode. After the speaker's presentation, there will be a question and answer session. To ask a question during the session, you will need to press star 1 on your cell phone. Please be advised that today's conference is being recorded. I would now like to turn the conference over to your speaker today, Lisa Banks, as VP of Finance. Thank you. Please go ahead. Thank you, and good afternoon. Thank you for joining us for ServiceNow's fourth quarter 2020 earnings conference call. Joining me are Bill McDermott, our President and Chief Executive Officer, and Gina Mastantuno, our Chief Financial Officer. During today's call, we will review our fourth quarter 2020 financial results and discuss our financial guidance for the first quarter of 2021 and full year 2021. Before we get started, we want to emphasize that some of the information discussed on this call, particularly our guidance, is based on information as of January 27, 2021, and contains forward-looking statements that involve risk, uncertainties, and assumptions, including those related to the continued impacts of COVID-19 on our business and global economic conditions. The guidance we will provide today is based on our assumptions as to the macroeconomic environment in which we will be operating. Those assumptions are based on the facts we know today. Many of these assumptions relate to matters that are beyond our control and changing rapidly, including, but not limited to, the timeframes for and severity of social distancing and other mitigation requirements, the continued impact of COVID-19 on customers' purchasing decisions, and the length of our sales cycles, particularly for customers in certain industries. Please refer to the press release and the risk factors in MDNA sections of our SEC filings, including our most recent 10Q and our 10K that will be filed for fiscal year 2020, for information regarding such risks, uncertainties, and assumptions that may cause actual results to differ materially from those set forth in such forward-looking statements. We'd also like to point out that the company presents non-GAAP measures in addition to and not as a substitute for financial measures calculated in accordance with GAAP. All financial figures we will discuss today are non-GAAP except for revenue, net income, remaining performance obligations, or RPO, and current RPO or CRPO. To see the reconciliation between these non-GAAP and GAAP measures, please refer to our press release filed earlier today and our investor presentation and for prior quarters previously filed press releases, all of which are posted at investors.servicenow.com. A replay of today's call will also be posted on the website. With that, I would now like to turn the call over to Bill. Thank you, Lisa, and good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our Q4 earnings call. Let me begin by extending my hope that you and your loved ones are healthy and safe. Having confronted an unprecedented global environment, we are looking ahead with optimism and are thankful to be so well positioned to serve our customers. Needless to say, we delivered a market leading 2020. We significantly beat expectations across the board bringing great momentum into the new year. I could not be prouder of our team's execution. We delivered over 30% organic top line growth, 25% operating margins, and $1.4 billion in free cash flow. Just an outstanding performance and a testament to our ServiceNow strong culture. Throughout the year, we led with courage and conviction. We took care of our team, our customers, and our communities. And most importantly, we led with ServiceNow's purpose to make the world of work work better for people. We strive to see the world through our customers' eyes with empathy to address their needs. The workflow revolution is happening and the pandemic is accelerating digital transformation. Every business needs speed, agility, and resilience. And every C-suite leader wants to deliver great experiences for their employees, and their customers. Businesses are changing the way they operate. They need to deliver fierce customer loyalty and deep employee engagement to win. It's all about people. Empathy at mass scale is the business imperative of the 21st century. The secular tailwinds of digital transformation, cloud computing, and business model innovation have all intersected at the perfect moment in time. A paradigm shift is happening worldwide. In 2020, 
For the first time in history, we saw digital transformation spending accelerate despite GDP declining globally. Digital investments are at an all-time high and are expected to continue growing. According to IDC, worldwide digital transformation investments will total more than $7.4 trillion by 2044. The digital economy is firing on all cylinders. ServiceNow is the platform company for digital business. The Now platform, what I call the platform of platforms, offers the speed, flexibility, and innovation companies need. Our simple low-code app development enables fast workflows to solve any business challenge, delivering consumer-grade digital experiences. The Now platform enables easier and faster implementation, delivering unbeatable time to value and fast ROI. That's the beauty of the Now platform. One platform, one data model, and one architecture. We seamlessly integrated all of this into our system. And that system integrates seamlessly with all systems of record that matter most to our customers. We deliver workflows through their preferred collaboration platform as well. We give our customers the freedom of choice to use their preferred tools and the unique ability to build apps at record speed. Hungry and humble is a core ServiceNow value. It's truer now than ever. We are grateful to be in such a strong position at such a pivotal moment, and we are hungry. We are eager to use our strengths to help our customers succeed, help make our community stronger, and help create great experiences for people. We are seeing an extraordinary expansion of use cases in our business. Healthcare organizations are using ServiceNow to improve operations and service delivery, which means better outcomes for people. St. Jude Children's Hospital has been on a journey to accelerate progress towards finding cures and saving children. In 2020, COVID-19 created a significant headwind to that mission. With much of the hospital staff required to work from home, the need to digitize manual workflows became more important than ever. The hospital leveraged ServiceNow, low-code app engine, and integration hub to integrate disparate systems and build custom end-to-end -end workflows, ultimately allowing them to ensure seamless delivery of critical services. In under four weeks, the ServiceNow solution was implemented at St. Jude's Children's Hospital, and everybody was moving toward their goal. We're also proud to be supporting NHS Scotland and their efforts to vaccinate 5.5 million citizens. NHS Scotland is using the Now platform and our customer workflow to deploy a customized solution designed to meet their specific needs. Deployment took only six weeks showing the agility of the NOW platform. ServiceNow is enabling a comprehensive solution for the scheduling and reporting of vaccinations for Scotland's most vulnerable citizens. Within 12 hours of go live, NHS Scotland booked over 220,000 appointments. So as you can see, it's not just about business workflows, it's about real people. Enterprise digital transformation is how every organization in every sector, in every geo, are adapting, growing, creating new business models, and empowering their people to be productive in any environment under any conditions. That's modern, agile, resilient business at work. And it's being powered by the Now platform. Our unique platform and innovative product suite, our strong brand, high customer satisfaction, and compelling value proposition are the differentiating factors and competitive advantages fueling our performance. Our Q4 results are testament. We dream big and deliver. We grew billing by more than 40% year over year, organically. We delivered 89 deals greater than $1 million and now have close to 1,100 customers paying us over $1 million annually. We landed our largest deal ever, 
surpassing the deal record we set in Q3 with the U.S. Department of Veteran Affairs. Deal sizes overall keep getting larger. Our renewal rate remained best in class at 99%. Here are some key customer wins from Q4. We signed a multi-year and multi-product strategic deal with AT&T. They are transforming by focusing on broadband connectivity, 5G, and software-based entertainment while relentlessly focusing on digital consumer preferences and experiences. We're delighted to work with AT&T Communications in its transformation. ServiceNow's AI-powered platform and service operations product lines will provide AT&T accurate and real-time operational visibility into every layer of the network fabric and help deliver the best-in-class customer experience. Better experiences for people enabled by ServiceNow. One of the UK's big four banks is, use, is using multiple ServiceNow products, including our purpose-built new financial services operations product to help transform the way it operates and to deliver better customer experiences. The bank has seen a 70% efficiency and improvement of payment processing by integrating the NOW platform into its core banking systems. With ServiceNow, this bank implemented new automated processes in 60 workdays. In their words, employees moved from cut and paste, swivel chair manual processes to efficient automated workflows. In one case, employees went from managing 10 requests an hour to 1,000 requests in three minutes on the NOW platform. Better experiences for people. PayPal recently expanded their relationship with ServiceNow as a key partner for elements of their digital transformation. And we're proud to have expanded our relationship with Nike, who is using the NOW platform to create better customer and employee experiences. Other Q4 deals across our portfolio represented wins with major customers in key sectors such as Booking.com and Travel and Hospitality, BP and Energy, Santander UK, and USAA in financial services, and the list goes on and on. I hear so many ServiceNow success stories every day. Companies are onboarding thousands of people in a work-from-home environment, making them feel productive and part of the team from day one. Customers are going live on the NOW platform in days, not months, making a difference for people now, not next month or next year, now. More productive employees, happier customers, more efficient operations. There's not a CEO on the planet who doesn't want that. The NOW platform delivers. These examples show how technology is no longer supporting the business. Technology is the business. Our IT leadership in workflows gives us a uniquely strong foundation to be the leading platform for digital transformation across the enterprise. In Q4, IT workflow products remain strong. ITSM delivered 17 deals over a million dollars. Our AI and machine learning capabilities embedded within our Pro SKU continue to resonate with our customers. ITSM Pro penetration is now over 20%. The AI ML capabilities of our Pro SKUs are automating processes to allow people to focus on the work that really matters. We saw a three times increase in usage of our virtual agent technology in 2020. And our Element AI acquisition underscores our commitment to being the leader in AI-enabled workflows. Element AI's deep bench of world-class scientists and practitioners will accelerate our AI innovation on the NOW platform delivering not only better capabilities for IT, but for employee and customer experiences as well. ITOM was included in 16 of the top 20 deals and had 15 deals over a million dollars. Risk had a very strong Q4, booking more wins than all of the prior year combined. Our ability to manage risk is really resonating with customers. 
ServiceNow is no longer viewed as back-end IT-oriented solution. We're now seen as a strategic partner that impacts the entire business. Customer workflows is our next $1 billion plus market opportunity for ServiceNow, and Q4 showed strong momentum. Customer workflows were included in 11 of our top 20 deals, driving such wins as AT&T. 10 of our customer workflow deals were greater than $1 million. In this pandemic, the employee experience is more important than ever, and our employee workflows are seeing strong demand. In Q4, 11 of our top 20 deals included employee workflows. The pandemic is creating the greatest workflow challenge of our time, and ServiceNow is responding with agility, speed, and continuous innovation. We began last spring, as you'll remember, with our emergency response apps, helping the state of Washington and many others respond to COVID. We fast followed that release with our safe workplace suite of apps that has demonstrated the power of the NAV platform and great employee workflows that we can deliver very quickly. In fact, more than 900 organizations now have downloaded the suite already. This week, we just launched the first in a suite of planned vaccine administration applications delivered out of the box functionality for our customers. Our comprehensive approach enables workflow solutions to the complex challenges of vaccine distribution, administration, and monitoring. As we have done with Safe Workplace, we will be delivering continuous innovation with our vaccine administration management applications. I'm excited to announce that the state of North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services is already leveraging the ServiceNow platform to power its COVID vaccine management system to help quickly and efficiently vaccinate 10 million North Carolinians. President Biden has declared the distribution of COVID vaccines a top priority for his administration. This is one of the great workflow challenges of our time. As we are doing right now in Scotland, North Carolina, and many other places, ServiceNow is ready to ensure vaccine distribution, administration, and monitoring, that it's simple, it's fast, and it's effective. It'll be so at the federal, state, and local level. In summary, we had an outstanding close to 2020, and we are not slowing down. We are changing the world one workflow at a time. And our vision is really resonating. C-level executives realize that behind every great experience is a great workflow. Our company is hitting on all cylinders. In 2020, we grew our global workforce by 26%, hiring 3,000 people in 25 countries, with most hired and onboarded digitally. We are hiring incredible talent, including some of the greatest minds in the AI industry. Our culture is incredibly strong. Our employee engagement is at historic highs. So too is our employee retention. Our brand is strong. C-suite awareness increased in double digits. Our innovation pipeline is robust. We delivered 70% more features and innovations on the platform in 2020. Our partner ecosystem is expanding. IBM, Microsoft, Accenture, Deloitte, EY, KPMG, and all the great partners in India, and many others have joined the workflow revolution with us. Together, we're bringing the innovation speed of a startup with the scale and reach of a rapidly growing $5 billion plus pure play SaaS company. And our RPO is nearly double that at $9 billion. We're the only born-in-the-cloud software company to have reached this size without large-scale M&A, and we have a clear path to achieve our $10 billion revenue target. We are also deeply committed to making the world of work work better for people, to helping our customers succeed. We are deeply committed to making the world work better, too. Gina will share more about our focus on elevating our global impact. I'm incredibly proud of our just announced $100 million investment 
in an impact fund benefiting underserved communities. And we're deeply committed to being a leader in building a, a diverse, inclusive workforce in which everyone feels that they belong because diverse teams with an indomitable will to win create great companies. ServiceNow is such a company, and we are well on our way to becoming the defining enterprise software company of the 21st century. That's our dream, and we will pursue it tirelessly with courage, passion, and conviction. Thank you. Over to you, Gina. Thank you, Bill. Happy New Year, everyone. I want to start off by echoing Bill's praise for all the employees of ServiceNow. It has been a year of unprecedented challenges, but the team has remained focused on executing and meeting the needs of our customers. I couldn't be more impressed with our resilience, which is a testament to our great culture here at ServiceNow. And it's thanks to our people that we delivered another fantastic quarter to cap a strong year. We exceeded the high end of our subscription revenues and subscription billings guidance, which carried through to strong free cash flow generation. Q4 subscription revenues were $1.184 billion, representing 32% year-over-year growth, inclusive of a three-point tailwind from FX. Q4 subscription billings were very strong at $1.828 billion, representing 41% year-over-year growth, and a $183 million beat versus the high end of our guidance. Adjusted growth was 38% year over year. The outperformance was driven by tremendous execution from our sales team, which resulted in significant net new ACV upside for the quarter, as well as 80 million of billing pulled forward from 2021 due to early customer payments. We believe the high levels of early payments were one time in nature and the result of customers having excess cash at the end of the year, given the incremental cost savings enterprises saw from COVID. Excluding these early payments, normalized Q4 billing would have grown 35% year over year, so well ahead of our guidance. Remaining performance obligations, or RPO, ended the quarter at approximately $8.9 billion, representing 35% year over year growth. In current RPO was approximately $4.4 billion, representing 33% year-over-year growth. FX was about a three-point tailwind. The traction we are seeing in our top-line results reflects our focus on meeting the needs of our customers and their employees. As Bill noted, the, work ro- the workflow revolution is underway, and it's centered around the best experiences. And that's the now platform superpower the ability to deliver workflows that create those great experiences for people. The NOW platform is playing a critical role in accelerating digital transformation. We're treating our customers as partners, listening and learning about their challenges so we can help solve them. We aren't selling point products. We're providing them with comprehensive solutions with measurable results and quick time to value. Better together. That's the power of our portfolio. It's this attention to our customers' needs that's driving our best-in-class renewal rate of 99%, demonstrating the stickiness of our business as the NOW platform remains a mission-critical part of our customers' operations. Our sales teams continue to win bigger deals in Q4, including our largest deal ever, which is three times the size of our previous largest deal. We closed 89 deals greater than $1 million in ACB in the quarter, with average deal sizes of 18% year over year. In 2020, we added nearly 700 net new customers, ending the year with almost 6,900 enterprises. The number of customers paying us 5 million or more in ACB grew over 40% in fiscal 2020. Customers are realizing the strategic value of combining ServiceNow IT workflows with everything from HR, CSM, and our app engine to deliver greater value across the enterprise. Our ability to land new logos and expand our existing relationships amid a pandemic further validates the strength of our platform and the value we're delivering to enterprise C-suites. Turning to profitability, Q4 operating margin was 22%, a 100 basis point beat versus our guidance, driven by our strong top-line outperformance. Year over year, our Q4 operating margin was consistent with last year as lower T&E expenses 
were offset by planned incre incremental R&D investment and marketing spend on pipeline generation. Our, cash fleet, our, ca our free cash flow margin was 45%, up 900 basis points year over year, driven by lower t and &E spend and strong collection. For full year 2020, operating margin was 25%, up 300 basis points year over year, and free cash flow was 32%, up 400 basis points year over year. Together, these results show the power of our business model and our ability to drive a balance of growth and profitability. Before I move to guidance, I want to give a brief update on the macro trends we're seeing in the business. The highly affected industries we outlined early last year, which represented about 20% of our business, continue to see macro headwinds, but remained resilient. Three of our top 20 deals in the quarter were from highly impacted industries, including retail, automotive, and energy. We do expect headwinds in some severely impacted industries to persist in 2021. However, retention of existing customers remains very strong in Q4. Overall, we're entering 2021 with strong secular tailwinds created by a surge in demand for digital transformation. Our pipeline continues to look healthy and our brand continues to resonate with enterprise leaders. ServiceNow is exceptionally well positioned to seize this opportunity. We have the unique platform and innovative product suite businesses need, the workflow standard for enterprise transformation. Turning to guidance, for transparency and clarity, I'd like to call out a few items. First, as I noted earlier, we saw 80 million in early payments from customers in Q4 which was an approximately 200 basis point tailwind to full year subscription billings growth in 2020. This results in a more significant headwind of about 350 basis points for 2021 billings growth. To be clear, these early payments have no effect on the timing of revenue. We've also previously talked about how early renewals and success with very large customers were impacting billing cycles as they can add additional volatility to timing and duration. This makes billings a less reliable leading indicator of top line growth. Given this noise and to provide investors with even greater transparency, we're introducing quarterly CRPO guidance. We believe CRPO will provide better visibility and is a more consistent indicator of business performance, normalizing for timing and duration noise. We will continue to provide billings guidance throughout 2021 as a transition period. Second, the need to digitally transform has been accelerated by the current macro environment, creating a very large opportunity for ServiceNow. With the savings we are recognizing from our more efficient operating environment, we're continuing to invest in R&D and quota-bearing resources to drive innovation and pipeline to fuel our tremendous organic growth engine ensuring that we maintain our market leadership and are well positioned to take advantage of the digital acceleration. These investments include those we were making in AI, such as our acquisition of Element AI. Similar to previous investments in successful growth initiatives like our ProSKUs or geographic expansion, we will be disciplined about our spend. Beyond our business investments, we will also be investing in people and communities We've always been focused on diversity, inclusion, and belonging. And as Bill noted, we recently announced our first ever $100 million investment in a racial equity fund to build equitable opportunity for black communities. This investment is expected to earn us solid returns while facilitating sustainable wealth creation through home ownership, entrepreneurship, and neighborhood revitalization. Finally, COVID cases have been spiking in recent weeks and some regions have re-entered lockdown protocols. While we haven't seen any significant impact on our business, we will continue to monitor and be transparent in our disclosures throughout 2021. With that in mind, for Q1, we expect subscription revenues between 1.275 billion and 1.28 billion, representing 28 to 29% year-over-year -year growth, including a four-point FX tailwind. We expect subscription billings between 1.31 billion and 1.315 billion, representing 24 to 25% year-over-year growth. Excluding the early payments from customers in 2020, 
our Q1 normalized subscription billings growth outlook would be 32% year over year. Growth includes a net tailwind from FX and duration of four points. We expect CRPO growth of 32% year over year, including a five point FX tailwind. We expect an operating margin of 25% and 202 million diluted weighted outstanding shares for the quarter. For the full year 2021, we expect subscription revenues between 5.48 billion and 5.5 billion, representing 28% year-over-year growth, including a three-point FX tailwind. We expect subscription billings between, between 6.205 billion and 6.225 billion, representing 25% year-over-year growth. Excluding the early customer payments in 2020, our 2021 normalized subscription billings growth outlook would be 28 to 29% year-over-year growth. This growth reflects an acceleration in net new ACV in 2021, and it also includes a net tailwind from FIP and duration of two points. We expect subscription growth margin of 85%, reflecting some federal and public sector customers moving to our newly launched Azure offering as well as increased support for customers impacted by new and evolving data residency requirements. We expect an operating margin of 23.5%, representing 150 basis points expansion off of our pre-COVID 2020 run rate. I would note that this is also an incremental 50 basis points more than the 100 basis points of expansion we target each year. Finally, we expect free cash flow margin of 30% and 202 million diluted weighted outstanding shares for the year. In summary, in 2020, we delivered a combination of both strong top line growth and profitability, an incredible accomplishment in a COVID environment. Our outstanding results continue to demonstrate our strong product portfolio, our focus on building deep customer relationships, and our commitment to enabling their digital transformation. We're delivering great experiences that drive powerful employee engagement, fierce customer loyalty, and significant productivity gains. We are the platform company for digital business. I'm extremely proud of our team's performance and their unrelenting execution in a turbulent year. We can't thank our employees enough for their hard work and dedication. We're well on our way to becoming a 10 billion revenue company on the strength of incredible organic innovation. I'm excited about the opportunities ahead of us in 2021. With that, operator, we'd like to now turn over the call for questions. And ladies and gentlemen, if you would like to ask a question, press star one on your telephone. Again, press star one on your telephone. We'll pause for just a moment to compile the Q&A roster. For our first question, we have Sterling Audi from JP Morgan. Sterling, your line is open. Yeah, thanks. Hi, guys. So in relation to, to the margin outlook, uh, understand the investment opportunity that you have, but also curious what you factored in in terms of any increased T&E and maybe perhaps even, dare I say, the return to a little bit of business travel you know, throughout the year. Uh, can you help us understand kind of what assumptions underlie uh, the, the margin outlook on that front? Sure, Sterling. Thanks, thanks for the question. You know, we, we talked about really continuing to focus on driving a balance of growth and profitability. Um, and I've been pretty tra transparent and open about so, those margins. We are currently expecting that a more normalized t &E will come back towards the back half of 2021. And so the expectations on the front half will be similar to what we've been seeing, but that we would expect some more normalized T&E to, um, to start again in the back half. Great, and then one just follow up. In terms of the digital transformations in the applications that you're, that you're tying into, I'd be kind of curious beyond HR and CSM, what are perhaps some of the other applications that you think that customers are gonna more rely on your platform as hopefully the economy picks up on the back of vaccinations? Well, thank you very much, Sterling. This is Bill. Uh, what you're seeing out there is each industry, you know, has its own nuances. 
Uh, for example, in financial services, I talked about security. Obviously, the future of work is a big movement to work from anywhere and certainly enable that modern work environment. Um, and do that in a way where people can be onboarded without actually even meeting them, um, train them appropriately, and do the ongoing management of people where they can truly execute their mission and they know all the information and they have all the data uh, to do their job. So this is happening in every industry and it's happening in every geo and each persona has its own unique needs. What we think is unique about ServiceNow is that this platform, think of it as the workflow automation platform, comprehends all the opportunities with App Engine to customize things very rapidly, like vaccine management, for example. It also offers the integration hub. And what the integration hub enables is all the things from RPA, uh, process mining, API integration, process analytics, native mobile, contextual, uh, interfaces, and all the other things that CIOs and leaders of businesses are counting on to create end-to-end -end continuity in the business. And that's what makes us so unique. So having that platform advantage and our well-known position in IT is equally as relevant with the employee experience because now you have one portal with a consumer-grade UX, all the complexity is hidden, all the onboarding caring for the employee is done, and they are right off and running with their mission. In some cases, I had one um, very high-level executive tell me I haven't met the 5,000 people I hired this year because of the now platform. And then on customer service management, in every industry, you know, I gave the AT&T example as one, you're seeing this frictionless business environment really take off. So how do we deal with the end consumer and do so directly in a way that enables our services to be consumed. So you're seeing this ease of use around ServiceNow, you're seeing the virtual agent guide people through subscription processes, and you're seeing all of our deep machine learning and AI help the customer navigate their sign-on processes and so forth. And the workflow then becomes the exception because humans shouldn't have to get involved in these processes unless the computer didn't get the job done and that gives us such an advantage because we're seeing situations where we can literally consolidate hundreds of systems that are now platform, take out a huge cost, give the customer a great experience, and obviously not put so much pressure on human capital because people are only engaged when they're absolutely necessary in the customer satisfaction process. So you're seeing a mass consolidation of all the old stuff to the now platform, you're seeing IT, employee, customer, and all the app engine and integration hub opportunities really come together on one common platform, one data model, and one architecture. So it's now a solutions company. It's now selling a suite. And the broad spectrum of offerings gives us reach to the whole C-level executive team, not just one persona on the executive team. Thanks, Bill. My pleasure, Sterling. For our next question, we have Keith Backman from Bank of Montreal. Keith, your line is open. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, I'll ask my questions, my two questions concurrently if I could. One, in the comments you mentioned that you thought you would see um, an acceleration of net new ACV which in 2021, which I thought was very interesting. I was wondering if you could just drill down a little bit more on, A, the visibility into that, and B, uh, anything that's bubbling up in in terms of uh, just seems to be a greater emphasis uh, to drive that net new ACV, what, what area? Uh, the follow-on question I want to direct to you, Bill, if I could. Um, last year you were pretty clear that uh, acquisitions was not part of your strategy, maybe some tuck-ins here and there. Um, 21 is a new year, lots of changes. Uh, the digital landscape is a greater priority. Is, is there any change in your thoughts uh, as you're considering uh, how ServiceNow could effectively build that long-term model as it relates to M&A. That's it for me. Many thanks. Yeah, well, th thank you very much, uh, Keith. Maybe I'll start off and then give uh, Gina a chance to build as she wishes on the, uh, the net new ACV 
um, inquiry. First of all, um, I'll just say that net new ACV on a year-over-year -year basis will increase. And the pipelines that we have in the company, um, and we manage the company on what we call the CEO dashboard in real time, give us much greater coverage than we had last year. So we know that the facts substantiate the net new ACV increase. Um, you know, one of the interesting things that um, is fascinating is actually our executive briefings have increased 70% on a year-over-year -year basis. So if you think about our ability to get to the C-suite and increase the contact in this uh, kind of virtual environment, it's actually gone way up. So um, a lot of people, I guess, need a good meeting and they want to figure out how they're going to digitally transform and the NOW platform has just dynamite uh, tailwind key. Now, in terms of, um, you know, the, the whole digital landscape, you know, IDC, I think the 7.4 trillion is very interesting statistic. Um, this is factual. If you just look at the way companies are prioritizing their investments, the one thing that's not going to get deprioritized is digital transformation and things that enable digital business because it's really the only way to either get yourself competitive or to increase your competitive advantage in, in your peer group. And, and every CEO um, completely understands that. And within that context, you know, I think the uniqueness of ServiceNow to have so much, so much momentum, not just in exciting new areas like the future of work with our employee experience or customer service management, which is really a frictionless economy now, more and more coming ServiceNow's way. But even in our core with IT, you know, you look at our ITSM core business, it's, um, it's outgrown our internal expectations by a lot. And you're seeing with the pro SKU, where we add on the machine learning and the AI capabilities on a platform approach, you know, that too is growing fast. And our engineering team is incredible here. Uh, I mean, the level of innovation they're pushing out was 70% increase 2020 over 2019. And we have major releases coming this year commensurate with what we did last year. So I wanted to give you a lot of confidence that the net new ACV is going up. The customers are buying and the pipeline is super strong. And here's one thing that I, I found fascinating. There was a study done by Deloitte and with all this digital transformation, a lot of executives are looking back and saying, Hey, why didn't I get a better return? on all I put into digital. And what they found is that about three quarters of the digital transformation projects didn't give the yielded return on investment that they had hoped for, and the number one root cause was integration. So as you think about the now platform integrating with 550 systems of record out of the box and all the collaboration tools, no matter which one the customer likes, and have that completely synchronized into the now platform out of the box and you're up and running in days, it's kind of an attractive value proposition to our customers and even non-customers that want to jump on board. I wouldn't add anything more on that. I think that that was a great answer, Bill, on the, um, the acceleration of net new AECB. On the M&A conversation, I think, Bill, um, I know you have a perspective. So. Yeah, I mean, look, here, here's the situation, Keith. We are not against um, M&A. Um, so far, we have done technology tuck-ins, or we've done what I would call human capital tuck-ins, such as we've done with um, AI. You know, we've gotten tremendous people into the organization to put all the value into the now platform and to generate net new revenue growth in the SKUs, such as what we did with IT, we'll do with employee, we'll do with customer, and obviously we'll do with the low-code, no-code innovation that we can give to the creator, which is literally a business analyst or anyone that wants to write a low-code application in an enterprise. So the way we look at large scale or larger scale M&A, you know, we wouldn't be doing our job if we didn't look at every opportunity to satisfy our customers and our shareholders. But it's important just to register with you that our projection on the 10 billion is clearly in hand with our organic innovation and the momentum we have in the marketplace with our customers and also the non-customers that want to join the team. Um, so, you know, it, there's nothing on the table right now for um, a larger deal, 
but it's not like we don't have our eyes wide open at the various opportunities. And if they ever presented themselves, you would know that we thought through it rigorously and it was part of our strategic imperative to really do the best we can for our shareholders and our customers. But right now, that is um, not on the table and it's not something that's uh, actionable at this time. Thank you guys very much. For our next question, we have Ramo Lancho from Barclays. Ramo, your line is open. Hey, thank you, and uh, congrats for me as well. I have two quick questions. Um, one number question, I'll start with that before I forget. Uh, Gina, like, I got a couple of questions in. The 200 uh, basis points headwind you got in 2020, like, can you just walk us through the math, how that becomes like 350 in in 2021, they had a good few guys that just kind of struggled with that one. Um, and then uh, let's start with uh, the one for Bill. Bill, uh, ITSM Pro should give you like a, we see the early momentum there. You talked about a 20% penetration. Just how does it help you on the, uh, on the expansion and the renewal and the conversations you get with clients as a really good tool to engage the client base? Thank you. Sure, so I'll take the first one. So yes, in, in, in Q4, we talked about 80 million of billings that were accelerated in Q4 out of Q1 of 2020. And so basically, if you take that 80 out of Q4 and put it back into 2020, put it back into 2021, that, that's where you see the, the double impact, right? And so you gotta take it out of 20. And add it back into 2021. And so it's about a 200 basis point tailwind to 2020, but then about a 350 basis headwind in 21. So we tried to do all the math for you um, so that it's pretty clear. And, 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 and just to be clear, that these were early customer payments, and we feel like it's one time in nature, and it was really a re result of our customers having excess cash driven by the OPEX savings that we said they were seeing in 2020. And so I hope that that clarifies for you, Raymond. Perfect, that really helps. Thank you, appreciate that. Okay. Uh, great, and then Raymond, I'll just give you a feel for ITSM Pro, because that was your question. Um, first of all, it's growing in, in steep double digits, very important. And while we're penetrating uh, 20%, that means uh, we still have 80% to go. So it's a really, really wonderful growth opportunity from a shareholder value creation perspective. But what you're looking at is remote IT services requests growing exponentially. And many of the IT organizations out there are looking for ways to deflect lower tier cases. So by leveraging chatbots and streamlining processes, part of the AI and ML capabilities are embedded with our pro SKU. So that's one aspect of it. And when you start to think about all the innovation that we've built in to this platform and the latest product releases, again, the value in it is so much greater because of the organic innovation the team has put into it. But customers are loving, gee, wow, I can transform IT, which then has an impact on the employee experience and the whole future of work. And incidentally, you know, there isn't a, a customer out there now that's not asking us to revolutionize, you know, their call center operations or enable people to work from a virtual environment better. And obviously in this frictionless economy, how can I do things with a no touch or possibly the lowest touch possible? How can I el eliminate the middleman in my margin pursuit as companies trying to grow in different industries? All of that requires the IT backbone. So what you're seeing is a multiplying effect of one story compounding into another and really stretching the perimeter of what we're doing for executives across the enterprise. That's why you're seeing deal sizes get larger and larger. You're seeing us uh, be in a very strong position in terms of the product, the value that it delivers, and the processes that we built for not only pre-sale value creation, but also post-sale value creation. So ML, AI, and the leadership that we built into this platform is really unique. Perfect, very clear. Congrats again. Thank you very much. For our next question, we have Cash Rogan from Goldman Sachs. Cash, your line's open. 
Hi, thank you very much. Congratulations, Bill and uh, Gina and the rest of the team. My question for you, Bill, is uh, the company has done a phenomenal job increasing it, uh, its wallet share with really large companies you know, through ITSM Pro, CSM Workflow, HR, et cetera. The question for you is as you approach the $10 billion journey and you look at other markets and software, uh, you tend to have companies that it's in the database market or ERP have a customer base that's close to 100,000, 200,000, maybe even 400, 500,000. So as you look at the, uh, the, the, how do we put it, the, uh, the scaling up of service now into a, uh, into a company that can serve not just 8,000, 9,000 customers, but more like 100,000, 200,000 customers, what does that journey look like and what are your plans to make this, uh, this excellent piece of technology that's known to less than 10,000 to be actually known and adopted by 100,000, maybe 200,000 customers? Thank you so much, that's my only question. Uh, it's my pleasure, Cash. Thank you very much for your, um, your kind remarks. You know, um, as you think about our company, you know, what's the, the beauty of us right now is, you know, we execute with the speed of a startup, but we have the scale of a global company. So you're seeing us now expand in Europe quite dramatically. We're hiring amazing, amazing talent. Um, you're seeing us make moves into the Middle East. Um, you're seeing the expansion in Latin America. We're really like starting to kick it into high gear in, uh, in Asia with an expansion in, uh, in South Korea. We have lots of plans in Japan. Um, we have a well-known brand, of course, in Australia and other more mature markets. In the United States, I feel like we're just getting started uh, based upon the amazing um, receptivity to this now platform. And I think that a lot of that came from our emergency response to COVID and now the vaccine management. And you look at, you know, markets and industries like financial services, like telecommunications, like our government business and so many more. So I would say we're just getting started in terms of the real expansion to scale. The brand has now become a very well-known brand. The ecosystem tailwind has really kicked in in the last 12 months. And once, you know, you get calls from amazing big brands and they say, I have to team up with you. My customers are demanding that I team up with you and integrate beautifully into the now platform. My customers are telling me that's a large telco company. In fact, it's not the one that I mentioned as the example. And they said, we have to do more with you. Um, so you're seeing now, a world where the Fortune 2000 gives us an extreme opportunity for growth beyond 10 billion, but our brand in industry, in geography, in persona, in same account revenue growth, in net new logos, which Gina and I also have an operating plan that increases pretty large this year over year, in addition to the N and ACV, net new ACV. Um, so cash is going to be you know, look at our four businesses that we already are in, look at every one of them as multi-billion opportunities, and then don't forget the platform, um, because I think more and more as the citizen developer um, concept takes off the service now, it'll find us in, you know, um, locations that go way beyond the Fortune 2000. And keep in mind, a lot of those large companies that you mentioned, you know, they might have a couple of thousand companies and they say they have a couple of hundred thousand because of all the subsidiaries and so on. So, you know, we're, we're talking about, you know, real companies with real names. And I think the subsidiaries of those in all theaters of the world will really take off as well. We're in the early days here. Very exciting. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Pat. For our next question, we have Walter Prechart from City. Walter, your line is open. Hi, thank you. Um, Bill, question for you just broadly. Uh, you know, I think if we were sitting here, when we were sitting here three or four years ago, we wouldn't have imagined the success that you know, the employee product and the customer service product have had. And I'm wondering how you think about over the next several years, your growth from, uh, from more prescribed SaaS applications versus you know, the past that you've, I feel like you've talked about more on this call. And, and what would you point to in terms of some of the emerging SaaS products that, that might be today where, uh, you know, HR and customer service were three or four years ago? Thanks. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Well, first of all, I, I would feature, Walter, the platform itself. 
And I believe strongly that ServiceNow has now pivoted to be that platform company for digital transformation. And that is a big difference from being quote unquote, what some used to say was the ERP of IT. So think about this as a platform company. Think about the core business and the continuous innovation that we're doing in the core to stretch the core into new frontiers. Um, we have a whole organization that is focused on the next big thing. So all the um, businesses that you would understand well, whether we invented it or someone else did, they all want to cooperate with the Now platform because the integration hub enables them to get in. And once they get in, then they can build their imagination and their dreams with ServiceNow. So I think there's a big business model in that that we are only scratched the surface on. If you think about employee experience, I think the uh, companies that I talk to, including ours, you know, we run someone else's system of record, but if you talk to 13,000 people in service now, nobody could possibly pick the system of record out of a lineup because all they look at is this gorgeous consumer grade UI that's driven by the ServiceNow portal where all the services that they need based on their job profile are right there for them. I mean, how big is that market? Um, and the same thing with customer service management. You know, we're learning fast in this new world that, you know, we've gone way beyond SFA and upsells and cross sells and, you know, conditioning that around a marketing campaign. We're into business model innovation where great companies like Disney or AT&T are rethinking their business model entirely and they're capitalizing on the streaming rage and they're coming up with subscription business models that reinvent the customer experience and give them, you know, net new businesses. Uh, ServiceNow is in that to win. And I think that TAM is absolutely unbelievable. You know, the other TAM that's pretty interesting that nobody spends much time talking about, but it's one of the reasons I see <laughs> ServiceNow's future is so bright. If you just take paper-based processes that are clogging up all of these companies and you digitize them to the now platform, um, there is a, a well-known bank out there that uh, says the U.S. market alone is a $280 billion market, which, you know, maybe globally that's a $400 billion market. And then I think this platform business, I, I really see an amazing, amazing future for the platform business. Just think about this. You know, if you're the state of North Carolina and you're a ServiceNow customer and you've got a vaccine management challenge, like literally in days, they can build a custom application tailored to 10 million citizens to get them the vaccine in their arm to protect them from this terrible virus. Again, that is just built onto the Now platform using the app engine, the integration hub, and all the innovation that our great engineers have built. So we're at the early days, and um, there are some things that we have plans for that will be uh, you know, forthcoming in the months and year ahead. But right now, I just wanna keep you focused on what we're doing because literally we've only scratched the surfaces of these businesses. Thanks, Bill. Thank you, Walter. Next we have Tom Roderick from Stiefel. Tom, your line is open. Hi, good afternoon. Thanks for taking my questions, and I'll echo uh, the sentiments on, a, on congratulations on a great finish to a, a, a challenging but phenomenal year. Uh, Bill, I wanted to ask you just a question on the, the app engine. Just looking at this percentage of, of ACV mix surge to 15%, you know, you're seeing certainly larger and larger customers and more customers lean in on the app engine vision. I'd love to hear a little bit more about that. In particular, if you could talk about what the app engine vision has meant for your relationship relationship with the channel partners, Accenture, Deloitte, and others. Um, just, just broadly speaking, it would be fantastic to hear about how you look at that today and how that's changing, uh, how, how big customers and, and partners like your SIs are leaning in here. Yeah, fa fantastic. So let, let's start with um, the, the whole idea of the partners. There isn't a partner that's a global partner right now that does not have a business plan 
that's a billion dollars or more with ServiceNow. Um, and many of them are in the multiple billions. And they're building their business model. Some of them tell me they look at the Now platform as the cross-platform integration engine of their business model with the various other companies, whether it's system of record software company or collaborative software company that they also have partnerships with. But they're looking us at us as the center of that digital transformation effort. That is a, a very, very big tailwind. Many of the net new innovative applications that they will bring to their customers, they're building onto on, on the now, now platform because the low code, no code simplicity of the platform can enable them to do things at, at record speeds. And, and I think that is, is a big, big unlock for them. So platform is really big. I also think the ML and the AI movement that we're on, you know, Element AI was kind of the finishing touch of four M&A moves that we made, which was really about acquiring not just patents and thought leadership, but real enablement of the now platform so we can truly unleash humanity in ways that heretofore were, were not possible. And you know, the computer and the human now can do things in terms of decision making removing soul-crushing work that nobody really wants to do, um, issuing workflow orders um, only when it's necessary because the virtual agent can solve 90% of the problems in most engagement with customers. And this is now like a whole new universe because many of those partners looked at us in IT. And now the employee experience, for example, you know, is one of Deloitte's most desired um, personas, and they're actually extraordinarily good at the employee experience, and they give us reach globally. And there are others on customer service management now that are saying what we're doing, um, especially with digitizing business processes, um, ease of use on subscription models like Disney Plus. You know, we are so honored to see Disney Plus say, you know, that's our you know, digital bridge to the future. We have great core businesses, but, you know, this is the digital bridge to the future. And, and ServiceNow is right in the mix of all of that. So, look, it's, um, it's a once-in-a-generation a once in a once opportunity, and I, I'm really, really happy. And I also, you know, look at the technology partners um, that we have now that have just adopted us as the standard um, for IT and, and so many other things. You know, we made the announcement on IBM, where they basically looked at their ITSM on-premise business and said, you know, we got to go to the cloud. We'd rather go to the cloud with you. That's where the innovation is. And, you know, we formed very good partnerships. Look what we're doing with Microsoft, you know, um, connecting with o O365, Teams, Dynamics, and bringing a whole new understanding of what's possible with the now platform um, working interdependently with Microsoft. So all that and more, is um, is all in the mix for our growth plan. That's great, Keller Bill. Congratulations. I'll uh, I'll jump back in the queue. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next question, we have Greg Moxowitz from Mizuho. Greg, your line's open. All right. Thanks very much, and um, congratulations as well on a very strong end to the year. I'll just ask one question in the interest of time. Uh, Bill, you recently hired a leader for your customer workflows business. And you've obviously done well here, but can you walk through what you see as incremental solutions or monetization opportunities in this area? Yeah, absolutely. Um, again, you know, we're hiring um, best-in-class talent. Um, we obviously have um, extremely bold ambitions for what we think we can do in the customer service management arena. Um, um, also, uh, John Ball, who is the gentleman that we hired, as you know, um, he ran the Einstein Initiative um, over at uh, another software company uh, in the area. And, you know, we feel that he has domain expertise. And when he saw what we were doing in customer service management, uh, he said, this is where I want to work. He said, this is the biggest thing that I've seen. 
He said, I can't get over this now platform, the simplicity, how quickly I can innovate on it. I'll give you an example. Um, he was front and center on the vaccine management uh, innovation. Literally, that whole process took us three weeks where vaccine management as a concept um, and an application was developed in three weeks and launched to the global marketplace. And it's in Scotland, it's in UK, it's in many states now in the United States. And uh, in the not too distant future, hopefully it's helping many of the federal agencies help uh, the Biden administration uh, save lives here in America and, and obviously in other parts of the world too. So it's the speed at which you can innovate on this platform. It's the pristine nature of this platform that you don't have to work with multiple different platforms uh, from different M&A moves or different levels of complexity that others have built up over time. You know, here it's just like, there it is, innovate on it, what's the idea? Let's code it and let's get it out to the market. We did emergency response apps, if you remember, over a weekend and we launched them globally in a week. I mean, it's just unheard of. And that's what's really exciting, that our engineers are spending all of their time um, coding new innovations as opposed to integrating past applications. That's great. Thanks, Bill. Thank you very much, Greg. We have time for one more question, and it's from Fred Havemeyer from Macquarie. Fred, your line is open. Thank you very much for taking my question. Uh, you know, I thought I'd actually go in a bit of a different direction here. And I'd like to ask, as someone who actually led no-code projects for Fortune 500 companies during the pandemic, I'd love to dig into your low-code vision a little bit more. Um, how do you see ServiceNow positioned within the low and no-code markets uh, to be able to enable line of business users to develop workflow automations and really deliver on that promise of democratizing development? Yeah, that's, that's the whole point. That's what we're talking about here. I'll give you an example. I had one uh, CEO said to me, hey, I want to get a, a good score on Glassdoor. <laughs> and uh, he said, uh, th there doesn't seem to be an application on the market for it. I said, yeah, why don't you get a business analyst and we'll design a workflow around that and you can launch it um, out into your company in, uh, in record speed, like a couple of days. So what's unique here in the case of vaccine management as an example, you took the platform and you customized something in a few days, basically, to vaccinate five and a half million people. But in the case of something where you just need to flow chart a workflow and rethink a process to, for example, roll out a rewards program or a recognition program, that can be done by a business analyst. So we're not inhibited by prepackaged software or doing things that are quite complex in development um, in the case of the platform because all you need is an idea. And if you have an idea, a business analyst can code on this platform. If you have an idea that's a little bit more complex, you can have a low code situation where somebody with a little bit of computer intelligence skills can uh, navigate this platform. So. Um, this is uh, kind of the secret sauce. I, um, I tell you, when I think about what it, what, what it can be because of the architecture and the simplicity of the platform itself, um, our imaginations just keep getting more and more uh, fulfilled with dreams and excitement. And, and I'm just so excited by our engineering teams. And uh, Gina and I have made sure that you know, we funded them appropriately. And most of the investments around here go to the great engineers and the people that serve our customers. There's zero bureaucracy in this company, just like there's zero bureaucracy in the platform. Thank you. Thank you. And ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's conference call. Thank you all for participating. You may now disconnect.